good morning welcome to the next lecture of this class uh, in the module of decision trees in the last class we introduced decision tree today we will look at some learning algorithm to learn decision trees so let us recapitulate the basic outline of the greedy decision tree algorithm that we discussed in the last class as we said that we start with a number of training examples let us say d is the set of training examples now we want to decide a test for the root node of the decision tree so we come up with we want to find out one of the suppose a is the set of attributes and then there are p attributes so we want to check we want to find one of the attributes based on which we will make decision at the root node so let a be the attribute that we have selected now based on that attribute i will look at the different values of the attribute suppose a takes two values and then corresponding to that we will have two children of a and the set of training examples d which is associated initially with uh, root a that will be split into d1 and d2 suppose this particular branch corresponds to a equal to true this corresponds to a equal to false so d1 will contain those examples from which a1 equal to true d2 will contain those examples for which d2 e d a equal to false now at this case when we look at d1 we will again have to select we have to either decide that we will stop growing the decision tree at this point or we have to select an attribute and we recursively go on and the basic uh, outline of the algorithm is given in the slide now as we discussed in the last class there are two decisions we have to take now out of these two open nodes we have to decide which one we should start with and then we have to decide if we decide to start with a particular node we have to decide at that node whether we should stop or whether we should grow the tree if we grow the tree we have to decide which attribute to split on these are the choices that one has to make when one goes for a decision tree now let us see how we take those decisions first of all let us look at the decision about when to stop so there are several cases where you may have to stop first of all if you consider that there are three features or three attributes and at a particular point suppose you have chosen a1 the feature a1 and based on that you have a1 equal to false you have got the split and then suppose you have chosen a3 and based on a3 equal to true you have got the split and here suppose you have chosen a2 and based on a2 equal to true or false you have got the split suppose here we have d2 then here we have d3 and here we have d4 now if it is the case that all the three attributes have been used up right so this particular examples contain a1 equal to false d2 equal to true a2 equal to true so all these things are given here so we have no more attributes to split on because we have exhausted the attributes if we have exhausted the attributes we have to stop here we have no option the second reason where we may stop if we find at this place that all the examples in d1 have the value plus or have the value minus if all examples of d1 have the same value for the target attribute we can immediately stop there and label this node as a leaf node suppose all of them are plus we will label this as a leaf node with the class of the attribute that we have or we may stop if the examples that we have got here are too few suppose d5 is the set of examples we have and d5 is uh, so let us say 
we have too few examples, then also we should stop. These are the three of the possible stopping criteria. Next, we will look at the decision about which node to split on. Uh, so, rather which attribute to split on. That is the test that you will apply at a particular node. For example, here we have the choice of using attributes A 2 or A 3. Here we have the choice of using attributes A 1, A 2 or A 3. Which attribute should we choose? Right? So, earlier we have talked about a bias criteria which says that uh, we want to choose a very simple function. We prefer simpler functions or we can say in the context of decision trees, we prefer smaller decision trees. So, we could think of a heuristic method of choosing the attribute so that based on this choice of the attribute, the decision tree is expected to be smaller. So, another thing that we could do is that we could think of if you have some examples here, let us say D 2. So, and suppose it is a two class problem, D 2 may have a mixture of positive and negative examples. If D 2 has only one type of example, we can stop at that node. If D 2 has a mixture of positive and negative examples, we can look at you know if we say that if we did stop at D 2, we will output the majority class. Suppose D 2 has 60 positive examples and 40 negative examples. So, if we had stopped at D 2, we could have said D 2 is positive and then we would have made an error and that error is 40 percent. So, we can stop so that the split gives the smallest error. And there are slightly more sophisticated methods based on which we can do this, which we will discuss presently. And if we have multi valued features, so this is one of the things that we can do and we will see more on this. Now, in this example, our attributes has two values. If the attributes have multiple values, then there are two choices. One is that we could take that attribute and suppose that attribute has four values, we could have four children. But you know sometimes uh, the attribute can be multiple, can be real valued and the number of children cannot be, can be extremely large. So, we could have if we have few children, then we could have multiple valued attributes or we could split those values into half. So, that we have two children. Suppose, uh, a particular attribute has the value low, medium, high. So, we could have three children corresponding to these three values low, medium, high or we could have two children and then we could say this is low and medium and this is high. So, if we use attribute A 1 as low and medium comes here, in a future below this node, we could also again split on A 1. Let us say A 1 is low, A 1 is medium. So, for multi valued attribute, when we use less number of splits, we can use the attribute again to split that node. Now, let us look at how we choose an attribute, some more principle criteria about which attribute to split on. Now, let us look at this uh, slide to look at two examples. We have uh, some training examples, let us say 64 training examples here 
and if we choose attribute a 1 to split on a 1 is a binary attribute having true and false, then if for a 1 equal to true, we get 26 examples on this side and 38 example for a 1 equal to false. Out of this 26 examples, 21 is positive, 5 is negative. For a 1 equal to false, 8 are positive, 30 are negative. However, if we split on a 2, for a 2 equal to true, we have 18 positive, 33 negative. For a 2 equal to false, we have 11 positive and 2 negative. Now, based on this information, we want to decide whether a 1 or a 2 is a better candidate for splitting. To uh, give an answer to this, there are multiple methods that one could use and we will introduce one very popular method which is based on entropy and information gain. Uh, so, entropy as you know is a measure of disorder in a system. If at a particular node all the examples are positive or all the examples are negative that is all examples belong to the same class, then it is a homogeneous set of examples and entropy is 0, entropy is low. However, if we have two classes and all the examples half belong to one class, half belong to another class, then entropy is highest. Now, a leaf node is one ideally where all the examples belong to the same class that is entropy is low. So, we would prefer that nodes quickly, uh, we quickly get nodes which have low entropy. Right. So, based on this, we have a heuristic to decide which attribute to split on. Now, when we want to select an attribute, we want to choose the most useful attribute and one of the criteria we use to decide what is the most important attribute is the criteria of information gain. Now, what is the information? So, if at a particular place we have some training examples where half are positive, half are negative and if we are given a random example and asked to predict its class, we have to make a random guess, we have no information. If the examples are equally divided among the classes, there is no information there. But if all the examples belong to a class and we identify that set of examples with that class information is very high. So, we want to have a definition of information and we want to prefer a situation where information is high. Now, when we decide which attribute to split on, we will use the principle, we may use the principle of information gain. And this principle, if you can look at the slide, this principle of information gain measures how well a given attribute separates the training examples according to their target classification. So, if all the examples have same target classification, information is high and information gain is high. If majority, uh, suppose 90 percent belong to one class, then also information gain is, information is quite high. But if 50 percent belongs to one class, 50 percent to another, then information is low. So, the measure of information gain, which we will define, is used to select among the candidate attributes at each step while growing the decision tree. And the gain is a measure of how much we can reduce uncertainty. If the examples belong to the same class, there is no uncertainty. If the examples are spread among the classes almost uniformly, there is high uncertainty. Now, based on this, we will define entropy. First, we will define entropy and in terms of entropy, we can define information gain. So, entropy is a measure of purity. A pure set of examples will have entropy 0. It can also be thought about as a measure of uncertainty or a measure of information content. 
Entropy is a very standard uh, term which is used in various domains in uh, thermodynamics, in information theory, etcetera. In information theory, just as an aside, in information theory, the optimum length code assigns minus log p bits. So, if you have p positive examples and p negative examples, so you have p positive examples and 1 minus p negative examples and you want to come up with a code, then in information theory the optimum code will use minus log p number of bits to send a message having a probability p. Right? So, we use the idea of entropy for decision trees and entropy is defined as the average optimum number of bits to encode information about certainty, uncertainty about S. This is the background of entropy and entropy is defined as entropy of S. S is a sample. S is a sample that is a set of examples it is defined as p plus p plus is the fraction of positive examples in this sample p plus minus log to the base 2 p plus plus p minus p minus is the fraction of negative examples in the sample p minus negative of log 2 p minus or we can write this as minus p plus log 2 of p plus minus p minus log 2 of p minus. So, this is the definition of entropy. So, if it is a homogeneous set then suppose p plus is 1 and p minus is 0. In that case entropy will be 0. If p plus is 0, p minus is 1, then also entropy will be 0. And entropy that is the value of this function is highest when p plus equal to p minus equal to half. Now, if you look at this uh, slide, this slide shows with the value of p, what is the value of entropy? We can take p equal to p plus, in that case p minus equal to 1 minus p. So, when p equal to 0, entropy is 0, when p equal to 1, entropy is 0 and when p equal to half, entropy is 1. So, you put half here, what do you get? Minus half log 2 half into 2 and this is equal to 1. The highest value of entropy is 1 when p plus equal to p minus equal to half and this is the shape of the entropy curve. Okay, the entropy is 0 if the outcome is certain, the entropy is maximum if we have no knowledge of the system. Now, based on entropy, we can now define information gain. Now, information gain of a sample S with respect to an attribute A is defined to be, this is the original entropy and the new entropy of the system if you split on attribute A. Suppose, if you split on attribute A and you get two different uh, values of A, then for every value of A, you, 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 uh, this is general for all the, you know, if you have multi values. So, for V included in all the values that A takes, the entropy for a particular class, this is the fraction. So, S V by S is the 
fraction of examples that have value for which the attribute has the value v. So, this is S v by S entropy of S v. So, what does it mean? Suppose, you have the number of training examples at this node of the decision tree and you split on attribute a and a has two values true or false and you have s 1 here, s 2 here and suppose the fraction of, so s 1, suppose s 1 equal to size of s 1 equal to one third of s and size of s 2 is two third of s. Then s 1 has an entropy, s 2 has an entropy and the resultant entropy is one third into the entropy of s 1 plus two third into entropy of s 2 and information gain is the original entropy of s minus the resulting entropy. Okay. So, in this particular case that we had seen that if we split on attribute a 1 and if we split on attribute a 2, which one we should prefer if we use this measure of information gain. So, entropy of s, s is the original sample. In this case, s has 29 positive and 35 negative examples and if you do the computation, entropy is 0.99. Now, we have to find out what is the information gain if you use a 1 and information gain if you use a 2 and this is worked out here. In the case of a 1, the entropy of s 1 is 0.71, entropy of s 2 is 0.74 and gain s a 1 can be computed as uh, using the formula. I am not working it out, but you can uh, follow the slide. The information gain is 0.27. Whereas, if you use the attribute a 2 for splitting, the entropy of s 1 is 0 0.94, entropy of s 2 is 0 0.62 and the gain is 0 0.12. So, where is the gain highest? The gain is highest for a 1 compared to a 2. So, according to this measure, we will use a 1 for splitting rather than a 2. Okay. So, a 1 gets selected because it has higher information gain that is the reduction in entropy is more for a 1. You want to reduce the entropy because you want smaller decision trees. Let us look at an example. This slide shows a set of training examples. Uh, yesterday in the last class, we had introduced a decision tree to decide whether the proponent wants to play tennis given the different parameters of the day, outlook, temperature, humidity, wind, etcetera and this is a data set. In this data set, if you want to decide at the root node which attribute we want to split on, let us say humidity and wind are two possibilities. The gain for humidity is 0.151, gain for wind is 0 0.048. So, we will prefer to split on humidity rather than on wind. Similarly, uh, now we look at the third attribute called outlook. For outlook, the gain is 0.247. It is worked out in the slide. You can uh, look at it. So, outlook is preferred to either humidity or wind. So, among these three, outlook seems to be the most promising. So, in if we do it for the all four attributes, we also do it for temperature. Temperature has a gain of 0 0.029. So, this slide shows for the, that training example, the gain for various attributes and we see the gain for outlook is the highest. And so, we will if you are using this measure of information gain, we will use outlook as the root test for the decision tree. So, this ID 3 algorithm given by Quinlan, it will select outlook as the root on these 15 training example and then outlook has three different values and then you take outlook equal to sunny, 
for outlook equal to sunny again you have to find out which node to split on. Since outlook has already been used up, we have a choice of three different attributes humidity, temperature and wind and this slide shows the computation of the gain of these three attributes. We see the gain of humidity is 0 0.97 for temperature 0 0.57 and for wind 0 0.01. So, we will use humidity as the test in this node. For outlook equal to overcast, we see all the examples here are positive. So, we will make it a leaf node and outlook equal to rainy, there are three positive and two negative examples. Again, we have to do the computation to decide which attribute to split on. So, if you grow the full decision tree, this is what we will get and you can work it out. Now, other than the information gain, there are other measures of deciding the attribute for decision tree. One popular measure is Gini index and Gini index is another measure of node impurity. We will not go into the details, but just to tell you the Gini index of a node is computed as 1 minus sigma of probability of C whole square, where the C are the different classes and P C is the probability of the class or the which can be estimated by the fraction of examples belonging to the class. Once you have found the Gini index of a node, you can do the Gini index of a split for an attribute. So, Gini A is sigma, again the fraction of training ex sigma over the values of the attribute, the fraction belonging to that value Gini of that node. So, based on that you can compute the Gini index and Gini index is another measure which is another heuristic which can be used for decision tree. Now, what we have discussed is decision tree which has two or three or four values that is nominal valued attributes. What if the training example contains an attribute which is real valued? So, if it is a real valued attribute, what you can do is that you can split the attribute values into two halves. So, for example, height, you can say height less than 5, height greater than 5, you can divide it into two halves or you can divide it into few discrete ranges and then you can grow that decision tree. Now, suppose you want to divide the attribute into two ranges for a continuous attribute, you have to decide what is the value on which you will split. Suppose there is the different heights are there and you want to decide whether you want to split at 4 or 5 or 5.5 or 5.3 or 6.2, you have to decide where to split. Now, for this also what you can do is that we can identify possible values for splitting and for each value that we split on, split the range on, we can find out where the information gain is maximum. Of course, this is a computationally intensive and it would require some time, but one can do it intelligently. So, for continuous attribute, one can do binary split and in order to binary split, if you want to do it optimally, you find all possible splits and find out where the information gain is highest. Now, we have covered the basic algorithm for decision trees. There are certain other things that you need to worry about when working with decision trees, whether or decision trees or other learning algorithms also, underfitting and overfitting, missing values, cost of classification, etcetera, which we will cover in the later class. Okay. With this, uh, we uh, uh, stop our lecture for this particular module and then we will continue again in the next class. Thank you.